I can't believe I have to say what I'm about to say, but if you have a gun in the car, fiddle farting with it in the drive-thru is stupid. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. And I'm your Saturday co-host, Stephanie Widener. Today's video is from Chesterfield County, Virginia. Today's video brought to you by New Way Ford. New Way helps people all over the country find the right new or used car at the best price with incredible service. We bought Mrs. Asp's 2021 Bronco Sport from New Way and I'm a satisfied customer. If you see me rolling in my New Way Ford F-150, come say hi and let New Way give you a quote on your next vehicle purchase. You're gonna see a car pull up to the drive-through here. It has a man, his wife, and his two children in that car. It's gonna place an order like normal. Now, this man has a firearm like in the console of his vehicle. You can't really see it right now, but he is gonna take that firearm and kind of put it in his lap. And if you go read the news stories I've linked in the description, he says it wasn't his gun, that he borrowed it from somebody or something. But what you're gonna see happen here is he is then going to now pick that firearm up and kind of playing with it, stick it on the car door and press the trigger and it goes off. He uh, thought that gun was unloaded. Again, go look at the news story that I've linked in the description. But the bullet went through his car door into the fast food restaurant and hit the clerk inside. It did not kill the clerk inside, thankfully, but it did hit the clerk inside. They did make a full recovery. It took police quite a while to find this man, but they did find him. He ended up pleading guilty to one misdemeanor and one felony offense. So he won't do this again because he is prohibited from owning firearms. Hey, fun fact, even without the injury, in many places, a negligent discharge can be filed as a felony. I think that's something most people don't realize. And knowing people that that has happened to, it has some pretty serious consequences, even if you don't ultimately end up with a felony on your record. Let's talk about it. You know, Stephanie, if I had a dollar for every time I hear of people negligently handling firearms and doing stupid stuff like this, I feel like we could retire. Yeah, you're not kidding, particularly in some of the Facebook groups that we have where they, you know, it's it's all about practicing and handling firearms and and, and dry fire practice and all of that. It, it happens and it's really easy to throw shade on someone like this. Uh, but all of us that are around firearms are at risk of this happening. So it, I think there's a lot of serious lessons that we all can learn because about the time you decide this can never happen to me is when you're probably at most risk. And listen, we, we practice the rules of safe firearms handling all the time. Everywhere we go, rule one, we always keep firearms pointed in the direction of least consequence. Rule number two, we always keep our finger high and in home base until we've made a decision to fire. And rule number three, we always keep firearms unloaded until they're in use. This guy clearly thought this was an unloaded gun, violated all three rules of safe firearms handling, and because of that, put this clerk at risk, his children at risk, his wife at risk, and his future is really severely impacted by that. And those of us that handle firearms all the time have to remember that, that humans make mistakes. By definition, we make mistakes, we miss things, the way our brains process things. It's kind of not a matter of if we will break an, a firearms rule at some point, but when. And that's why the redundancy is so important. If you religiously follow all of them all of the time, the one time you miss or are inattentive or, uh, or whatever may have you, uh, the others will cover you and keep this sort of thing from happening. So it's really important for all of us. I also think this is worth remembering. Hey, listen, I hate car holsters. I hate leaving guns in consoles. I hate those stupid magnet holsters that they sell on the internet. And listen, this is an intentional act. He intentionally presses the trigger. So when people ask me, John, you know, what's the right holster for my car? It's the one that you used to bring the gun into the car that was on your person. And you minimize unnecessary firearms handling. This is a guy fiddle farting with his gun is what it is. And quite frankly, he deserves to be convicted of a felony for this. And this kind of recklessness and negligence could easily have ended someone's life. This is not a joke. And this is why we say we always follow the rules of safe firearms handling and we never play with guns. A really good quality holster. And if you don't have one, we have several recommendations 
on our website, ActiveSelfProtection.com, because a good holster will not only keep your firearm safe and secure, but it will keep it comfortable on your body so that you are able to wear them while you are driving, while you are moving around, while you're going for walks and playing with little kids and what have you. So there's no need for it to be on and off. If you're carrying a firearm all the time, you know that the most dangerous time is when you're doing what we call administrative gun handling. That's when you're not practicing or not doing anything else, but you're getting guns in and out of holsters, putting them away for the evening, getting them out for the evening. And, and wise firearms handlers minimize that as much as possible. When I'm done with my gun at the end of the day, the entirety of the holster comes off and goes into a quick access safe. So exactly so I don't have to increase my handling of a firearm, they're by increasing my risk for a negligent discharge. And it's that kind of thoughtful um, planning and gun handling that I think most firearms carriers can benefit from and really reduce their risk in a meaningful way. I also think one final thing here, the guy just ran off and he tried to hide from what he had done. Don't do that, friends. If you screw up, own your screw up, right? So a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person does their best to do the right thing at all times. But if they don't do the right thing, they own their mess. And this guy didn't own his mess. And I think that's probably why he ends up with a felony charge here. So please, let's follow the rules of safe firearms handling. Let's not unnecessarily administratively handle our firearms. Let's make sure that we are good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people and cover our ASP.